Hey y'all, welcome back. My name is Ashley. Today I am going to attempt to recreate these cards. So earlier today I decided I wanted to do just a quick little loose beach scene with some seagulls painted with gold. And this is the Dr. P.H. Martin's iridescent calligraphy colors. It's copper plate gold. And just see how that would look together. And I love testing ideas on these tiny little cards. I really liked it. So I want to do a little bit larger of a piece. This is Arches um, 9 by 12, I believe. 140 pound cold press. So without further ado, here we go for a real time narrated tutorial for the first time on my channel. Let's go. All right, so in these, I used three colors. I used anthraquinone blue. Because I wanted a dark blue for like the back line of the horizon. I wanted little bit more of a greenish blue so I did phthalo turquoise and I knew I wanted a little bit of sand out front as well as some of the greens that are in the water here so I pulled some yellow ochre And those three colors minus the gold are the only things that I used to create this. So let's see if we can recreate it in real time now because it was a quick little painting. Rinse all that out of my brush really good. Okay, so I know a lot of people start out with the sky but in this particular one, I really just wanted to start out with the horizon and I wanted to get into the horizon and I wanted it to be really dark. So that way when I met it with clean water, a lot of that would flow. And I didn't quite go down, or I didn't quite go all the way to the edges. My suggestion when doing this is to be very conservative with how much you paint and may have painted a little bit too much blue for my liking we shall see but either way what I'm gonna do now is knead it with clean water and when I say conservative I also mean as far as leaving white spaces I may have left too many for my liking actually but that's okay because we can always go back and fill those in with clean water and the color will bleed back into it but we can't go back and get those white spots again and I can even go in and reshape some of these so like that one was a crazy shape so I went in and I just reshaped it a little bit can even go in and drop some clear water to lighten some areas up and this is where I'm gonna get all fiddly but it's mine it's what I want to do this is why I don't post real-time tutorials y'all because I take forever so now transitioning from that dark anthraquinone I'm gonna grab some of that phthalo turquoise and just start to drag it through try not to lose any of my white spaces and 
I'm gonna even add a little bit more water to it so it's even lighter. I'm gonna go back to my flat brush for this working better for me. Yeah, keeping those nice parallel lines. And even pulling out a little bit of color. All right, so we got our turquoise in. As you go down, as you go down, these little white lines that are supposed to be like, um, you know, waves, the breaking waves, these are thinner. The farther away, the thinner they're gonna get and the closer they're gonna get together. And the closer you are to the viewer, the fatter they are and the farther apart they're going to be from each other. So that just helps play into perspective and push that background back so your painting doesn't look flat. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of the yellow ochre in here. Rinse my brush real good. Try to connect some of these. And just do what you think looks good. Try not to get too, too worked up over the little things that you don't like at the moment. So that's all the way down to the bottom. I will go back in and another way to create the illusion of depth is underneath these white spots just to add a little bit more darker color. So it kind of simulates the shadow that that wave would have as it rolls. So we're going to go back into the anthroquinone pretty thick thicker than I have it out on the palette, so I just went to the well, and we're going to try to place that underneath there somewhat. It looks nice too, especially like, you know, when you drag it over here into these um, lighter colors, it just adds that contrast. And we might do the same thing with this phthalo turquoise. Grab some thick pigment of that color. And as we get down here, maybe just place a little bit of that. And that's not blending out quite as much as I'd like it to. It's a little bit thick, so I'm just going to pick some up on my brush and move it around. Maybe we'll put a little bit more of the green up in here too, just to kind of try to maybe break up some of that color, add a little variety. I 
color change can add a lot to a painting. So sometimes it gets me in trouble. Sometimes I, I do too much color change, but I would rather not have a flat looking painting or just a boring painting. Color change can add a lot of interest. So now that we're done with that bottom portion, I'm gonna pick my flat brush back up, make sure it's nice and clean. This, there's still a few little wet areas in here, but I think it's gonna be okay. So we're just gonna go for it and we're just gonna, you know, we don't have to wet the whole page and just add a little bit of water where we think it needs to be. And very light anthraquinone. all the way down there and if there's any spots that you don't like that are um, you know dry you can always take you know clear water on your brush and just fill those in I do want to go back with a little bit stronger in a few areas so your sky usually gets darker as it goes up so it's not going to hurt to add a little bit of darker color up at the top it helps add to that sense of depth kind of like we did down here with the darker at the back of the um water line at the horizon so and if that's just a little bit too regular you can always just go break it up and you can always add some splashes of water to cause some back runs and some back blooms because those look beautiful in skies I think personally We can even go pick up some color if we want to. If it's too samey. And we might even take a little bit of that um, turquoise and put it in there just to kind of unify it a little bit still want it to be a little bit lighter at the bottom so I'm trying my best to pull out I might have to um, wait a minute for it to dry. A lot of what's going on here also depends on the type of paper that you use. This is Arches paper. It is 100% cotton and therefore is going to, by default, dry more smoothly, more evenly, and it's not going to afford you 
the textures that a pulp paper would as readily. So we have to factor in the time and we have to wait. I have to let this dry. You can see these, these are Strathmore cards. They were, um, they are made with pulp paper. So these blooms right here, they happened almost immediately. And you know, that might not be something that you want all the time. I definitely prefer cotton paper over pulp paper, but in certain situations such as this, it just worked better for me. And so, like I said, we're gonna have to wait on that. I will throw a little bit of texture down here. to kind of mimic the beach and just get rid of any um, lines that look too parallel. And that's it. I will meet you guys back when it dries. All right, so now we're gonna work on our birds and look, these birds are not perfect by any means, I will tell you that if you're using this ink, it works very well. It is very opaque, but it is an ink. It's not a watercolor. It starts to dry and it starts to get gloopy. So while I try not to add any water to it, once it starts to get gloopy and stuck all over my brush, I do have to dab away and add a little bit of water to thin it back down. Otherwise you start to get areas that the brush just doesn't quite do what you want it to do so <clears throat> that being said I'm gonna shake this up really good and then put some out on my palette I try to keep this stuff separate from my watercolors so like if I put it out on the palette like this next I, I will clean it up before I use it again and I do not mix it into my watercolors it is purely a highlight thing I don't want the gold to contaminate my um my everyday palette and it will so I do get my brush damp but then I make sure it is fairly dry and I'm using a dagger striper it's a one quarter inch from silver black velvet all my brushes have been today from silver black velvet that's a one inch flat and this is a 14 round so now i'm just going to kind of try to go these little guys where i think that they need to be so i want a clump of them over here And I kind of try to vary the shape and the direction at which they're flying. I don't want them all looking the same. But I don't want them all being little V's and little M's like that either. So I will on occasion make one a little bit more um, I don't know, uh, a little bit more descriptive of a shape, I guess I should say. So an easy way to do that is a little curve like this. And then I just put that V shape on top of the curve. And you can curve up the edges of that V. It makes it look like the bird is flying. And obviously the farther off in the distance they go, the smaller they're going to be. So our smaller birds 
will be that B shape and the M shape, but the larger birds will be more of a descriptive shape like that. We could even do one too much. We can even do one like this and have its wing pointing down. Hey guys, future Ashley. I am currently editing this and I realize exactly how hard it is to see that gold under my desk lights. So I promise at the end of this video to throw in some still shots so you can see the birds a little more closely. All right, I think that that is enough. So now I am going to grab just a little bit of water and dilute this gold down because if you notice here, I have just a little bit of gold on the sand to kind of tie it together. I didn't want the birds to be the only spot in the whole painting with gold, but I also didn't want wherever else I put the gold to detract from them. So we're just going to put in a little bit right in here and we can leave some of it textured and we can bleed some of it out and that's pretty much it all that's left to do is sign it and I'm not going to do that until the sand dries, so just let me know if you like this video. This is my first real-time tutorial. We'll see how that goes. If you guys are listening to me now, then you know it made the cut. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I am a new channel, and my channel is very small, so just Give me some tips, give me some ideas for videos, let me know what you guys want to see from me, and I will try to make that happen. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. All right, we're back for that closer look at the gold that I promised. And there it is. You can see that I varied the shapes and also the sizes to get that depth and just a little bit of gold on the beach helps tie it together.